the president has no constitutional authority to take this nation to war against a country of 70 million people unless we're attacked or unless there is proof that we are about to be attacked. And if he does, if he does, I would move to impeach him. While I believe I have the authority to carry out this military action without specific congressional authorization, I will seek authorization for the use of force from the American people's representatives in Congress. President Obama has sought what from Congress exactly? Approval, certainly not permission. Well, he maintains that he has the inherent authority to go to war with or without Congress, and that's what Secretary Kerry has said as well. He has the right to launch these operations regardless of what Congress does. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I think it's going to be very hard to ignore the results of a vote after having called for the vote. Uh, if the vote turns out to be no, uh, it would be a very difficult thing politically, I think, for Obama to simply let the tomahawks fly like so many other presidents have done before. Uh, the Senate voted on an amendment offered by Rand Paul, which essentially used uh, the president's words against him in 2007. He said, the president does not have the authority, I believe he told Charlie Savage, the president does not have the authority to uh, take unilateral military action unless there's an imminent threat. Uh, and he used that to construe that the uh, Congress, if it were to vote against the president, would he would be found in violation of the Constitution. That was a neat trick to throw the president's words back in his face. He did say that on the campaign trail, and he got it right. The president doesn't have any constitutional authority uh, to launch sudden attacks, uh, you know, in the name of uh, humanitarian principles. He does have uh, a reserved constitutional authority to defend uh, against attacks on the United States. Uh, but, you know, in the uh, 2011 Libya intervention, uh, the Barack Obama showed just a how faithful he was going to be to, the, to that campaign promise when he uh, not only uh, launched a, an undeclared war on Libya, denied that it was a war, that the phrase was kinetic military action, which is an odd phrase because I, I, I believe kinetic action is the only kind of action you can have. Uh, the alternative would be static action, I guess. But he not only uh, uh, launched uh, tomahawks and uh, uh, you know, airstrikes against Libya without congressional authorization, he uh, violated the time limits in the War Powers Resolution, taking that war beyond 60 days. That was something, by the way, that his own Justice Department refused to back him up on. The authorization of the use of military force that is floating around in the Senate right now, what does it contain? Well. On Saturday, uh, the president released a, a draft uh, authorization for the use of military force in Syria, and that resolution was strikingly broad. It had no time limits. It uh, gave him the power to use U.S. Gr US armed forces, uh, no limitations as to whether those could be boots on the ground. And uh, uh, it did not limit him uh, to attacking the Syrian regime or even to uh, maintaining his actions uh, in the geographic uh, territory of Syria. It was broad enough uh, for this president, or perhaps even future presidents, to, uh, to, ta to, to launch a wider war. Uh, what the Senate did uh, was the Senate Foreign Relations Committee has just released a revised authorization that tries to fix some of these problems. And the problem is that these are ve it's very difficult to get these limits to stick, and this is, a, this is a situation where the president is seeking something that he should not have in the first place, and it's not uh, Congress's job to fix something that he ought not to have. The complaints in the Senate are, uh, some of them are about sunsets, that is to say, at what point would the president have to come back to Congress? and either provide briefings or some sort of uh, a limit on his use of military action. How credible are sunset provisions in any authorization of the use of force? Well, with this particular president, I don't think they're very credible at all. Uh, the 
time limits that are in the uh, in the the Senate resolution uh, track the time limits that are in the War Powers Act. Uh, you get 60 days, and then uh, you can re-up for another 30 if he tells the Congress he needs it. Uh, but as we know, in the the Libya adventure. Uh, Barack Obama became the second president. Bill Clinton was the first with Kosovo to blow past the uh, War Powers Resolution's limits, and with without uh, you know Congress be damned. Uh, so it, again, it's very difficult to see how that limit is going to stick. A lot of these uh, resolutions have uh, whereases, sort of a list of particulars on why the action is being taken. What makes these whereases? Uh, more relevant than they otherwise would be. Yeah, you can usually ignore uh, the uh, Section 1 and an authorization for the use of military force. It uh, uh, often just lays out reasons uh, the uh, target regime uh, has been a bad actor. Uh, in this case, though, there is, a, there is a, a clause that recognizes, in, in which uh, if this resolution is passed, Congress would recognize an inherent power on the part of the president, not just to defend the country uh, or U.S. armed forces against attacks, but to use military force uh, to defend the national interests of the United States. Now, that's broader than the limits, uh, than the, the recognition of presidential authority in the War Powers Act. It's far broader than uh, the constitutional limits that uh, Obama recognized on the campaign trail in 2007. And I think you have to worry that uh, if this is authorized, it gives away the game. I mean, if the president, if, if, if Congress is for the first time uh, writing into law and recognizing that the president has a, uh, a, a power to use military force in the name of what he perceives to be the national interests of the, of the United States, a power to use offensive military force, uh, then, well, that, that, is a, that is as broad a power as any president could assert. Uh, in 2001, Congress passed an authorization of the use of military force uh, shortly after the attacks on September 11, 2001, and the powers that are contained in that authorization have been broadened for years and years and years, and we're still learning, uh, even very recently, how those powers are being applied. Yeah, the history of AUMFs is that presidents will push them for all they're worth uh, to the limits of the language and uh, usually beyond. Uh, you know, the, it, with the uh, Gulf of Tonkin resolution in Vietnam, uh, Johnson said, we seek no wider war. This is going to be a limited action. Well, it gave us the longest uh, war uh, up to that point in American history until the uh, AUMF that was passed after September 11th, which uh, we are still using to uh, wage what seems to be a perpetual war. And as you say, the, the, the uh, language in that resolution has been strained past the breaking point. Uh, President Bush used it to authorize secret surveillance programs to make the claim that American citizens could be captured uh, on American, so American soil and held in military confinement. President Obama has used it to support the uh, targeting of American citizens for uh, death by drone strike abroad. And it has been used by uh, President Obama to expand a, a network of secret drone bases uh, in the Middle East and Africa. And we, and uh, war against increasingly marginal groups that didn't even exist on September 11th. I mean, we, we literally have drones over Timbuktu, which sounds like a, sounds like a joke, but, but it's not. This resolution has, has been used to authorize what seems to be a permanent war. Given what we know about how President Obama has largely disregarded the War Powers Act, the terms of the Constitution, and how President Bush and President Obama have made use of the 2001 AUMF. What is the likely outcome here? Well, I think what you can say from looking at history is uh, this authority will be will be pressed as far as it can go and maybe further. Uh, even if the risks of presidential abuse of what the Senate is contemplating right now, even if they aren't as great as the abuses we've seen with the uh, 2001 AUMF, 
I think what what's pretty clear is the idea that President Obama is going to do anything useful or even coherent with the new authority he seeks is uh, those chances are pretty small. Uh, I mean, if you listen to the case for the action they want to take, the case for for airstrikes against Syria, uh, I mean, what are we doing here? The uh, the idea is that. Uh, you know, to punish people who, quote, flout uh, international norms, we're going to launch a war that's clearly illegal under Article 51 of the UN Charter. Uh, the idea is that we're going to be, what, uh, you know, vindicating this, uh, this sacred principle that if a dictator is going to slaughter civilians, he better make sure he does it with conventional weapons. Uh, the case for war doesn't make any sense. And that's why I don't, I don't think it, it makes a lot of sense for Congress to take this risk. Uh, if, you know, Congress should not be in the business of fixing something that the president shouldn't have in the first place. 